Hi, my name is Alan Ladwig, head of public outreach at NASA. You might be wondering, why are NASA and LEGO here together? Well, let me tell you about our really cool partnership. You see, both NASA and LEGO value excellence, creativity, learning, and teamwork. By combining the wonders of space exploration with those fabulous LEGO bricks, we intend to do projects together to inspire kids of all ages, and yes, even you older kids, and bring those values through innovative activities and projects. But before you jump into those LEGO bricks and start launching your ideas, let me tell you about the LEGO bricks that are now up in orbit. Yep, that's right. In May, the Space Shuttle Endeavor transported LEGO kits to the International Space Station to be assembled by the astronauts. Children and student groups around the world will be able to see how they did it and how different it is to assemble the same ones here on Earth. Maybe assembling these in microgravity is a little more challenging. But check out our website, www.legospace.com, for more information. But wait, there's more. Are you here to see the last space shuttle launch? Well, that's great. But what's next for the space program? NASA is not ending human spaceflight. We are recommitting ourselves to it to ensure America's leadership in human spaceflight for years to come. In addition to supporting the International Space Station, we'll continue to conduct world-class science missions to observe and understand our home planet. We'll send robotic spacecraft to other planets such as Mars, travel through the solar system, and peer even deeper into the universe. We'll advance aeronautics research so we can fly safer, quieter, more fuel-efficient airplanes. We'll pursue two critical building blocks for future of human exploration, the Orion crew vehicle and the heavy lift rocket, to let us send astronauts on long journeys into deep space. Hey, maybe you'll build one of those for us today. We will also promote the commercial space industry to provide transportation and services, not only to the space station, but to low Earth orbit. In the meantime, we can't wait to see what your creativity and imagination will design for us today. So get ready, learn while you have fun, and inspire us on how you envision the future of space exploration. Change is inevitable. As much as people don't like change, it's the only thing that's constant in our lives. We have to transition from shuttle uh, to a new future, which we're going to define, which can be even better. For the first time in my career, working on vehicles that will leave low Earth orbit again. We're looking at a vehicle that can eventually carry 130 metric tons or so to low Earth orbit. That's a pretty big rocket. It's on the order of what we had back in the Saturn program. The heavy lift vehicle allows us to put large masses in space that are required to go to these destinations outside of low Earth orbit. And then we'll have this capsule that'll go along with us for the, for the trip to where we're going. And it's based off of the Orion capsule that we were working on before. Um, it seats about four crew members and that's the basic capsule that will go out into space. And then this capsule will, will serve as a re-entry vehicle back into the Earth when we come home. Anything that we do in terms of space exploration is worth the expense. Um, because it gives us an opportunity to, to um, explore and to investigate and to experiment on things that, that we just have no way to fathom here on Earth. When you put things in the microgravity environment, you take them away from gravity, um, you, you learn a lot of different things. What we're doing is we're investing in a broad portfolio of technologies. Some of those technologies are risky. Some of them will pan out, others will not. But in the end, we'll have the technological capabilities to go to places and to explore, both with robots and humans, that we can't do today. What we've done is we built kind of just a basic path or a basic architecture of all the destinations we could go and now we're starting to define all the capabilities to go to those destinations. This is called a flexible path because uh, with these capabilities we'll be able to go to multiple destinations such as back to the moon, to near-Earth objects, to, to Mars and its moons, and to Lagrange points. 
these are all places that we can feasibly go to with people in the, in the foreseeable future. We are an exploring species. NASA is leading that exploration effort for humankind as we go forward. Can we do this? Absolutely. Is it going to be a challenge? You bet it is. But I know that this team is uh, capable of making it happen. Not only happen, but happen in a uh, superb way that uh, sets the standard for everyone else. I uh, look forward to the days ahead when, when we actually do uh, send people out to, to these places to touch them and, and set foot on them and discover things we don't even have a clue of. Future that allows us to explore beyond our home planet, to seek our destiny, to, to learn what we couldn't possibly learn if we were stuck in low Earth orbit. And that's what we're off to.